Good afternoon, everyone. Simgaget, Sigetamanak, Gibbet Wiltsik. My name is Melanie Mark, Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Training. I'd like to acknowledge we're on the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations peace here at the Vancouver Cabinet Office. Welcome and thank you to my colleague, Shane Simpson, Minister of Social Element and Poverty Reduction, and Marsha Nozick, CEO of Embers, for joining me here today. I'm to be here speaking on behalf of people I know and respect and who are doing their level best to make a difference during this extraordinary time. Residents in the downtown east side are stepping up to make a better place for their neighbours, despite the endless obstacles they seem to face. Peers, peer workers have been in the front line supporting some of, of our most vulnerable citizens during this emergency health pandemic. COVID-19 has dramatically impacted our lives and the lives of everyone around us over the past three months. It's been a stressful time for everyone, including residents in the downtown east side. Many of us recognize the complex diverse needs of people in the downtown east side community. Many of these individuals were failed by the residential school system, are immune compromised, and are struggling with mental health and addictions. Many people in the downtown east side, their peers are their only family and source of strength. Their peers are who they turn to to get through the day. I want to acknowledge the resilience of these residents and their unwavering justity to help one another out during both positive and challenging times. One of our government's key priorities is to support people and provide services that they can count on. We also do strongly in innovation and partnerships. Residents and community organizations in the downtown east side called on our government to support peers. This call to action is driven by loving and compassionate individuals who know better than anyone how best to support their needs. They are often the unsung heroes of the downtown side. Today, we are supporting a unique grassroots approach. I am pleased to announce $200,000 in funding from the Workforce Development Agreement to empower peers in the downtown east side with training and paid work experience to support their neighbours to maintain social distancing, while also sharing important information from Dr. Bonnie Henry and helping peers with access to food, housing, education, sanitation and health services, to name a few. Forty peers will take part in this initiative, gaining valuable skills and paid work experience. My ministry is doing this by building existing programming offered by Embers, the Eastside Movement for Business and Economic Renewal Society. Peer workers will be recognized for their leadership and lived experience, and we will continue to support them with anything they need to leverage their knowledge for future job opportunities. Embers will also be gathering community insights to better understand the true lived experiences of people in the downtown east side to help inform government on other goals that we should be looking at to success, successfully support vulnerable people to stay safe and build capacity for training and job readiness. Ultimately, this is the kind of empowerment our government leaves in. I want to thank Marsha, CEO of Embers, her entire team and some of the partners involved, including WISH, Eastside Works, Overdose Prevention Society, Aboriginal Front Door, Raise the Rates and the Downtown Eastside Women's Centre for stepping up to lead this project. I also want to thank the federal government for allowing us to be flexible and nimble, to respond quickly to emerging community needs through the Canada B Workforce Development Agreement, a file that Minister Simpson and I share together. Because strong working partner, the working relationship between our governments, we are able to deploy resources to focus on community-led supports. As we continue to navigate through phase two of the restart plan, it is more important than ever for all of us, no matter where we live, to continue to support each other, reach out to our family and friends to help our neighbors while continuing to practice safety measures. Let's all doing our part to lower transmission rates and keep flattening the curve. I know in my heart better times are ahead for us, for us all. And now I'd like to invite my colleague, Minister Simpson, to share a few remarks. Thank you here today. Hawa. 
Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Minister Mark. And uh, I want to also acknowledge that we are here on the traditional territories of the Wim Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations and to thank them for the opportunity to, to live, work, and play here. Um, I particularly want to thank Minister Mark for her leadership uh, on uh, accessing uh, these resources to put uh, this peer program in place. What we know is uh, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, peer support workers have been on the front lines. They've helped people access resources they need, and they met in ways that engage people uh, who, who they understand and have a, a close identity with. Uh, as examples, uh, during the last two check issue days for checks from my ministry uh, in the downtown east side, peers played a critical role in helping support physical distancing and protecting health and safety of people who are entering banks and government offices. And, and we get pretty significant crowds around check issue day, um, as we'll see again tomorrow. Uh, but the peers have played a critical role in that initiative. Also, during our recent efforts to house people living in the encamped Oppenheimer Park in Vancouver and also at Topaz Park uh, and uh, the Pandora Corridor in Toria, peers were there. And they were critical to the success that we had in those initiatives. Uh, they were able to help campers to express their concerns, their fears, and their needs so that they could be matched with appropriate housing options. Uh, they helped campers to pack and move. And we continue to uh, see them support people experiencing homelessness. Peer workers play an essential role in getting trust with people as they transition to being housed. They provide grassroots feedback to us as government around uh, the steps that we need to take to be successful uh, as we work together to provide supports for those who are homeless and those who are street entrenched. It really is hard to overestimate the value of someone being able to honestly say, I understand what you're going through, I be you are. And peers can do that. And they can do it in ways uh, that as government officials, as politicians, we simply can't do. Peers bring a unique perspective and a type of empathy uh, to continuing to work with our vulnerable populations to navigate COVID-19. And what we know is those initiatives are going to be very necessary uh, for some time to come. The challenges of COVID-19, the challenges of the pandemic uh, continue to be in front of us, will be in front of us for quite some time. And I know as we work and as uh, uh, Minister Mark, as the MLA for the downtown east side and myself and my responsibilities in my ministry, we look, we're looking at what the path forward looks like to ensure that we provide the safety and protections that we can to people living in the downtown east side, people living homeless, uh, people who are vulnerable. And the role that peers play will be essential in helping to guide us and helping to support the work we're doing. By developing skills, the peers also draw on lived experience to support people in overcoming those friendships. They play a valuable role on the front lines of the fight against poverty and homelessness in British Columbia. This funding is a critical step in the right direction to ensure that we can maintain and improve effective services for those who are living homeless, for those who are living in the downtown east side. It will provide, this uh, funding will provide peers with training and additional tools to emotionally support people to communicate about available resources and be a link between vulnerable people and government. I want to express my gratitude to all of the peers for using their experience to lift others up. With it, we will not be successful. And I want to thank them for their commitment to making their neighbors a lot better. At this point, I want to introduce Marsha Nazik, the CEO of Embers, who are going to help us to administer this program. Uh, over the next six months, em Embers will be working uh, with the Town East Side Peer Network to make this work. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Ministers, both of you, um, tremendous support, tremendous description of peers. And, um, you know, I was just thinking how 
in um, in peer work, we take something like a lived experience that sometimes is seen as a barrier or sometimes is seen as something very negative, and we actually turn that into an asset, and we can build on those assets. So, you know, I was thinking about this 10 weeks ago when the reality of this COVID pandemic really hit BC. And the government and uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry said to all of us, you know, if your work is essential, go home and stay home. And then I thought, well, how do people who are homeless stay at home? And that's the crux of the issue and the problem the downtown east side. People are living in crowded conditions in shelters, on the streets, in close quarters with one another, and they're really... Um, it's very difficult to distance. And at the same time, the organizations that only had spaces for people to um, to meet, you know, drop-in centers and places where people came to eat, uh, those those organizations closed their doors for the time being. And this worsened the situation um, <clears throat> for, for the security and the protection of people in the downtown east side and there be, to be safe. And if there's one lesson that I think that we've all learned from pandemic, it's that our fates are interconnected and that the health of every person is really tied, literally tied to the health of all of us. And that includes our most vulnerable and most, most marginalized and especially the most vulnerable and marginalized who have um, little ability to protect themselves. So as a result, the downtown Eastside organizations came together to share resources and to respond to this state of emergency. And a major part of this response has been to reach out and hire the people who live in the neighborhood with lived experience who might be homeless themselves to support others in the neighborhood during this pandemic. And some of the jobs <clears throat> that um, people have now are helping to keep people socially distanced. Uh, they're distributing food, uh, taking them t- it, food to people living in the SROs. They're cleaning up garbage because, you know, garbage is amassing. Um, giving out information on COVID. They're monitoring the outside washrooms. And the drug addicts are helping to reach out to other drug addicts to help them to add safe supplies of drugs, and they're overseeing um, these respite centers that are popping up, such as uh, Atira and the women uh, and the downtown Eastside Women's Center that have, and WISH, that have, have created it for women. And, and women from the street are helping to oversee that. $200,000 of funds coming from um, the Honorable Melanie Marks Ministry is going to t- into the existing work that's already underway. It's going to build upon it. It's going to extend it and also going to study the impacts. The peer demonstration project, as I'm calling it, is going to employ some 40 peers in county side over a six month period, utilizing, um, 8,500 of peer workers. And, um, the research that's going to happen, we're going to study the impact of peer work on people's lives and their livelihoods to better understand the challenges and the best practices of this new and emerging model for helping people who face multiple barriers to begin to attach to the workforce. Um, through this peer initiative, people will gain skills and paid experience, and embers will gather information along the way to further inform future programming and its ability to respond to the labor market participation needs of people in the downtown east side, which is different. They don't fit the, the, your regular mainstream employment model. So I think this is a very innovative approach and can be shared with other jurisdictions as well, the results of it. And um, there's another very important uh, component of your work initiative that I'd like to mention. Work is itself considered to be a key determinant of health. It really changes people. Uh, work is more than a job. It provides needed income, but it also builds self-esteem, a sense of purpose, identity. It gives a sense of uh, hope for a better future. And uh, it gives people a way to participate in the economy and to give back to their communities where before maybe they were just on the receiving end. So all of this is um, 
are basic needs. They're they're intangible, but they're still basic needs of, and and they're of of our social health. So by focusing on the transformative power of work, we begin to see people's lives change. And so this demonstration project will study not just the hard skills and the income, but also the improvement of people's lives and their sense of well being as a result of this of this work. Thank you. And uh, can I ask Mr. Mark to come up to the podium for questions? Thank you. A few gentle reminders to the media. Please press star one if you have a question. Media limited to one question. We will be able to take follow-ups, time permitting. And please do keep your handsets unmuted. You'll be audible till I call your names. Are there any questions at this time? Hearing none, uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, everyone.